Yo, what up? You already know who it is, man. It's YFRS. It's Next on Vote. And today, I'm going to take you on a tour of this platform that I've been using that has been freaking phenomenal um, and decided you should be using it or start using it to build your iOS, Android, and web applications. And the platform is called Flutterflow. Mm, indeed. Yes. So right away, you can see the screen is just like a, uh, this is the build screen. This is the design screen. This is where you start your design and work on your UI, UX of your actual application. As you can see right away, there's a bunch of widgets over here. And this is where the magic actually starts. They basically give you the building blocks that you need to get started without having to start from ground zero and truly build from scratch. Uh, nowadays, it's about speed. It's about kind of getting the market quick, have the idea and get it built. Uh, so right away, you can see they have text, they have columns, so you can make anything that scrolls up and down, rolls, same thing left to right, uh, containers, uh, pre-built image, holder, uh, buttons. Um, you have a grid view. So maybe if you wanted to make like an Instagram when they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine photos sitting in the grid, um, you could build that. Spacers, uh, I don't use those because you could put spacing between the actual uh, widgets yourself. Um, I can show you guys how to do that later. Uh, page view, so this is huge. If you want to build a TikTok on um, the screen, the reels, uh, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, they're used in a page view, a uh, type of view. Uh, you have carousels, something for a banner, uh, wrap to make it easier to make responsive layouts. You know, So if you're going from a phone or mobile website to an actual laptop website, to a full desktop website, a wrap is a good uh, widget to use to kind of bring those things down to scale or expand them based on what platform you're on. You got rich text. So if you wanted to make a blog and have something more specific that you write out, um, icon buttons, a YouTube player, toggle icons, badge notifications, progress bars, timers, um, all the bases that you really need to get started, even though it's not like 500 or 5,000 widgets, to be honest, um, I still haven't used all of these. I don't think you need to. Uh, most apps after a while are using the same thing. So enough talking. Let's actually use it, right? Let's get started and let's build a makeshift, you know, Instagram type page. All right. Let's new redesign this over here. Let's look at that. Uh, so let's just throw a couple of things in here real fast. So we can build it out kind of quickly and see where we land. So we're going to need that and we're going to need a grid view down here. Um, I know this looks like gibberish right now, but I promise you it's going to look great. Now this is the builder view. I like using the actual widget tree, which is this, so we can see what we're actually dropping into these views. Um, helps a lot. Um, so right now we got the makeshifts of this. Let's design it a little bit and see where we go, right? So you can change everything using the right hand side. You can actually make changes to what's on the screen. As you can see, you could drag and drop a lot of that in there. You could also just hit this add widget button right here on the screen and click that to actually search and find an add a widget there too as well. So we're going to use that. Um, just add text. Let's actually add that in the right place. <laughs> Let's see. Cool column. This is where I want to put that text. So you can see it popped up right there. Let me change the color so you can see where it's at. Oh, there we go. Size 18. So we got another one. Maybe that might be the username. All right, let's, let's start building this out a little bit. So I like to just kind of dump things on the screen just to have it there and then start shaping it up. Let's, here's that spacing I was talking about. So item spacing right here. If you look at this row right here that's in green, it creates item spaces. So let's do something dramatic so you can see it. You know what I mean? So you can create spacing or you can create a small amount. Let's create like 16 right there. And these will be the actual posts, kind of like Instagram. Um, so let's do okay. Yeah, we can't see that. All right. Let's do black. Boom. So you can see that. Add a little bit of water radius. Or actually, let's leave it. Uh, so let's throw a photo in there. Um, go to background image. And we'll go over this all later. Right now, I just want to get you, like, going. Um, so you can see what I mean with this whole thing. So 
um, as you can see, this is coming together pretty fast, right? You know, so this could be maybe the username. Um, this could be user type. So let's say producer. Um, let's shrink that text to like 14 secondary colors. So it's not right. And you can see it's like not sitting right. So, right, let's actually put this to start. And with this, a little trick that we can do. Um, there you go, All right? So you can see quickly how this could become, you know, let's actually shrink the spacing between it a lot. Close. Boom. Let's create some space. Overall, maybe like 16. There we go. So right away, obviously you can see this is kind of starting to become low key, like a you know an Instagram vibe pretty quick. Um, let's make one more little change. Now I'm using this stack because I want to put a layer on top of that, like cover image back there, just to give it a kind of a gradient on the background. Um, and then we're gonna sauce this up a little bit and then kind of be done with this. But this is the introduction of just getting started, seeing how you can throw some things around pretty quickly. Um, let's see, let's do, let's remove the picture off of this. Let's go back to network. Let's add a gradient, let's make the gradient. So you can see how you can start making that look a little fire right there. Transparent. Um, Let's actually make this. Bit taller. So you can actually see it, boy. Change this overall background back here. Let's actually go black. We will change these. To gray. So they stick out a little bit. Yeah, so there you go. That's like the beginnings of a of an Instagram, right? You know, and that's pretty much like the beginning. So you could change this. You could say my profile, or well, this could have been the username. You know what I mean? Maybe you add a back button if this was a profile screen. So that's the beginnings. So as you guys can see. You could actually use this to actually build out things pretty quickly. Um, obviously, none of that's dynamic. I can show you guys how to do that later to actually get that functioning and working. I do have an app that I built that is similar to this. Uh, it's already in the app store. It's called Next Sound Collabs. So that's NXZ Sound uh, Collabs, C-O-L-L-A-B-Z. Go check it out. Put the link somewhere in the comments or something. Uh, but this is like an introduction. So once again, you know, you have your capability with the widgets right here that help you to get started and be able to build things like this. Um, it's a couple things here just on the front end of the screen that you can actually see, which are some basic things. So obviously you can close that um, so you can get a full view, you know, uh, of actually what you're building. Uh, you can have the, you know, see the different sizes that you're building on. So if you had an iPad version or web version that you wanted to build out, you can actually see that as well. Um, you have a couple things right here. Obviously, I don't have light and dark mode set up. I like dark mode all the time, so I stay there. Um, let's put this back on the phone. You can take this phone outline off if you want. So you could just design like that. That's this display device. Um, if you're working on web, you could do this to resize something uh, by hand. So you have that capability is there as well. This is for the background you know, of the whole designing. So if we wanted to change all of that, you could. Just in case you don't like the dark background, I do. So we're gonna stay right there. Um, yeah, so as you can tell, it's a lot of little vibes that you have. They even have the ability up here to leave comments on screen. Um, you have the ability, ability to go through your versions and create snapshots, which is huge, um, which we can go over later. You have the ability to see optimization and enhancement. So, when you start to build, notifications are going to start to build up and show you some ways that you can make your app more fluid, 
um, and optimize the build. Or if you have something messed up or if you're, you know, different things that's going on with the app, you'll be able to debug and fix it pretty quickly. Um, it helps you. Speaking of debugging, it actually show you the issues and warnings and errors if you have any on platform. So right now we're all green, so we don't have any. Um, but those are things that you can actually do. You actually have the branching capability. You even have the ability to view the code. Now you can't edit the code right here, so that it can be a little deceiving. Um, but what you can do is actually hook Flutterflow up to VS Code. Uh, more recently, you can hook that up using VS Code and cursor and add some AI elements in there to actually help you with the actual flow. But it is kind of convenient to be able to see that you do have the code. And more importantly, um, if we go back, you can actually download the code. You can connect GitHub and push the code uh, right here. So you can download the code. You're not locked into Flutterflow. At any given time, you can actually take your code and leave Flutterflow, which I like. So you're not locked into a platform. So God forbid, but just in case, you know, there was no more Flutterflow and Flutterflow is no more, you still have your code and capability to actually run your application. Um, so you can download the, the Android pack. You can download the actual iOS pack, web pack, connect to GitHub again, push to actual uh, GitHub. So you can save that into a repository and you're good. You know, you can pull that back up in VS Code and kind of keep building. So as you can see, right off top, quick little video, um, you can pretty much start digging into uh, Flutterflow and start making some pretty amazing things fairly quick. Uh, watch the next video. I'm going to take you through the rest of what Flutterflow can do. You already know what it is. It's Wild for Rest. Next time, folks. Yeah.